when I was trying to figure out a Mother's Day song, there just aren't a lot of upbeat Mother's Day songs out there. Um, and the Lord led me to this one, and I was thinking, this isn't a real upbeat song either, Lord. But he helped me to start thinking about this one, and I'm going to share it with you. There are times in my mothering that I could have done so much better. There could have been better decisions made. If I could relive being a mom, there's certain parts that I keep. There's certain parts that I throw away. There's certain parts that I put more emphasis on. Um, but it is what it is. And I'm thinking there's probably a lot of ladies out there feeling the same way. Um, so I and you, we just need to trust his heart mm -hmm. to know that we have done what we can do. Yeah. Amen. And we'll leave the rest of it to the Lord because he's got a plan. Yeah. And now I'm not going to be able to sing this song. <laughs> <coughs> but I do think that there are parts of the song that speak to every one of us, and even the guys. Um, I know there's times when you wish you'd been a better dad, um, better father, done things different too. We all just have to trust his heart. Yeah. He knows best. <laughs>
stand with us as we sing as the deer. Thank you, praise team. Let the children be dismissed to Children's Church. Moms are a gift from God. They are a gift from God for us. Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 20 says that Adam gave her the name Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. She would be the mother. Eve would be the mother of all the living. It is God's plan that we have moms here today. It is God's gift to us. And I want you to look at a passage of scripture. It is Proverbs 31. And I just have to, uh, have to get a couple of things clear here before we begin. One of which is my tie this morning. My tie, if you can see it, it's got a bend in it if you hold it that way. But if you hold it this way, it's got a big giraffe on it. My wife loves giraffes. 
<laughs> she thought I planned that this morning. No. Somebody gave that. In fact, Nina and Jim Saltzman gave me this tie this morning and uh, told me to wear it sometime when Linda would enjoy it. And so I thought, what well, a better time than Mother's Day. And it worked. I just wanted to tell you, it worked, okay? She loved it, all right? That's my first confession before I start. <clears throat> the second confession is, my wife does not like this passage of scripture. In fact, it may be the single worst passage of scripture that is in the scripture according to her. Mike May said to me, he said, I opened the bulletin and saw where you were preaching from today and I started to chuckle because I, I knew Linda didn't like that passage of scripture. <laughs> and it's about an ideal woman. But let me take you back to the very first part of Proverbs 31. It says, the sayings of King Lemuel, an oracle his mother taught him. Okay? This was taught to him by his mother and some great wisdom there. And then it concludes with this, a wife of noble character. She teaches him about getting a wife. And the very first thing it says in verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find. And it's right. King, I don't know that you ever found a woman like this. There may never be a woman like this. It may be somebody that your mom wanted to keep you at home and never let you get married. I don't know. This woman does seem to be ideal, does she not? And it makes many mothers on Mother's Day to be a little uncomfortable. Let me tell you about what I've seen in her. <clears throat> I told Linda, I, she said, I don't like this scripture. And, uh, and I've told her for years, well, then you have to take it up with the Lord. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. <laughs> but it says that this woman, her husband trusts her. She is a successful businesswoman. She is a morning person and a night person. How do you get that? She provides for her family and her servants meals. Linda doesn't have even one servant. No wonder she's upset. <clears throat> she makes everyone clothes. She works all day long and she laughs at the days to come. It's like, ah, no problem, I got it. I got it under control. I'll do it again tomorrow. I guess laughing is better than crying. But in this passage, the one thing I want us, want us to focus on, which is the one that the Lord brings the most attention to, is the one at the very end. And it's the one that we're going to look at as we stand and as we reverence the, God, the reading of God's word this morning. And we're going to begin in verse 28. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. You may be seated. Above all, the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. He says, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but the one who fears the Lord has a beauty of the soul that you really can't deny. This morning, I would like for us to attend to the two places that he points the particular point of his pen to, to children and husbands. We'll start with the children. When it says, her children arise and call her blessed. Think for a minute, children, and all of you are children because all of you have had moms. Who changed your diapers? And who cleaned up your messes? I heard someone speaking outside of my office this week about someone in their family that was being diaper changed. And uh, they were getting ready to be transformed from the diaper to the underwear. And they were trying to help mom when uh, that accident happened. So gonna put their own underwear on after the diaper became dirty. 
I can imagine what that looked like. <clears throat> Who set up with you through the night when you were sick? Who read you bedtime stories? Maybe prayed with you? Maybe kissed you goodnight? Who prepared the meal that you eat when you sat down for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Who bought the groceries? Who learned the recipes? Who cleaned up the dishes after you ate? And who did it over for the next meal? Who cleaned the house? Who washed your clothes? Who helped you with homework? And then brought it to school when you forgot it? Who took care of you when you were sick? Who kissed you and made it better? Who tampered down dad's temper when you needed someone in your corner? Who made your birthdays special? Who decorated? Who, brought, who bought you the gift that you really wanted? Who paid for the tickets when you wanted to go see the special big time game or the concert? Who watched all your ball games and cheered you on? Who was and is your greatest encourager? Who sacrifices their time, their money, in their lives for you. Today is her day. Today is your day. Your day to make her day as special as you can. Today is the day you share your praise. That's what the scripture says. Her children arise and call her blessed. How do you do that? How do you arise and call someone blessed? How do you arise and call someone for the praiseworthiness that they are? And I realize that there is a whole spectrum of moms that are here. There are some who have had moms that are excellent. Most people have, would say that their mom was excellent. And some have not, have had, not had that experience to have an excellent mom. But you know what? It is God's gift to you for the mom that you have had. You are here because of her, and if there's no other reason why you, are, why you should praise her, it's because you're here today. She has given you and brought forth life that God has blessed her to have. So how do you praise her? Let me just get real serious just a second. Suppose that tomorrow your mom was killed in an automobile accident. And on Thursday of this week, we would have her funeral. What would you say at her funeral? That is what you ought to say today. The very thing that you would praise her for when she is gone is the thing that you need to praise her for today. And to be able to do it while you have the opportunity to be able to do that. I shared this with you some time back, maybe on a Mother's Day some time ago, but I share it with you again because it means to me a whole lot because I get to see in this my mom. This is a letter that I hold in my hand. It is 39 years old this Mother's Day. It is a letter that my mom wrote to her mom and somehow I got it in a box of stuff that was left over when we separated stuff in my mom my mom's belongings. It is her praise to her mom on that Mother's Day of 1980. And I want to read it to you. Dear Mom, I thought I'd write you this Mother's Day letter and to tell you how much you've meant to me for 49 years. I know that you had a life of hard work, especially when I was at home. I remember you doing without clothes so that I could have more. And how hard you worked making money to buy them. I remember you seeing that I got to church on Saturday on, uh, on su and Sunday school. 
even when it meant washing and ironing Saturday night. I remember in my teenage years, you loving me enough to find out where I was going and who I was going with. And saying no a lot of times that I didn't understand then, but I do now. Thanks for being firm against all my begging. I got pretty good at it. And thank you for giving me through the years something every time I came home or brought to me when you came to see me. I know it hasn't been easy for you and you've made lots of sacrifices for me. And I thank you. It's not, easy, it's not an easy job to be a mother. And you started out much too young. Thank you for seeing that I didn't start out that young. Mom, you've always been such a strong person. And I didn't know and I don't know how you, you've done it. I've always known that I could depend upon you and you were always there ready to help, ready to help me when I needed you. I want to be that kind of mom to my children. God has so blessed, uh, God has been such a good blessing to me in many ways, but one of the most important ways was giving you to me for my mother. Thank you for a lifetime of love, Jenny. A Mother's Day letter. When you honor your mom, you are honoring the Lord who gave you this command for children to arise and call her blessed. Honor your mother, the scripture says. And we as a country have set aside a day to be able to do that in a very special way. I hope, children, you'll have an opportunity to be able to do that before this day is over. Some of you have done so by being here today, and for that I am very thankful. Second is husbands. Husbands, your husband also is to praise you. And a quote here is, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. What about you, husbands? What would you say this week if you lost your wife? I think I'd know what I'd say. I would say I'm sorry. I'd say I'm sorry for making mountains out of molehills. I think I would say I'm sorry for letting the criticism and nitpicking replace the praise that it should have been. I would ask, why did I make an issue over things that weren't that important? I would praise her. That's what we're called to do, is to praise our wives who are mothers. Write her a letter. I have mine with me. Don't think that there's nothing in this. There is. It's written just for Linda to be able to see today. I hope, husbands, that you will do the same. If you praise her, consider giving her a gift. And let me just say, don't make it a vacuum cleaner, okay? <laughs> it won't go over well. Give her a gift that says to her, I was thinking of you when I bought this. I was thinking of you when I bought this. Not thinking of me. 
I was thinking of you when I got this. A man decided to give a special Mother's Day gift to his wife, and so he wanted to treat her very well all weekend long. He bought her presents, he took her out to eat, he made her life easy around the house. But when she told him later about the most significant moment of her feeling praised, it was none of the things that he had done. It was a time in church when the church had offered for men to stand up and to give praise to their wives or their mothers. And when this man in the church took the microphone after a number of people had spoken, in fact, it was given as the last call. Anybody else want to share about their wives? He arose and he spoke ever so briefly about his wife, telling how thankful he was for her godly example. Those 18 seconds were the highlight of her weekend. She even requested a tape of the service so that she could savor those thoughtful moments. It is admirable when men do the things for their wives that they ought to do, that they compliment them, that they will publicly demonstrate their affection for them. When a man says, you're special to me, when a man says, I appreciate you, when a man says, I love you, Proverbs 31 could be a great passage when you look at the end and say, hey, what am I supposed to do as a husband? And look at the quote, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Are we praising her? Her husband also is to praise her so that means to praise her that means to praise her that means to praise her gentlemen if you're falling asleep that means to praise her <laughs> it's a Greek formation Hebrew word praise her because charm is deceiving you can turn charm off and you can turn it on and you know right when it's turned on, when it's turned off, you can do that. In beauty, anybody who is aging would say beauty is fleeting. And all the women said, amen. <laughs> but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And children, you and husbands, you and I are the ones to do it. Someone wrote this little poem, a man who finds a godly wife is blessed beyond compare. She is his greatest prize in life, a treasure rich and rare. In this passage of scripture, in the previous verses, it talks about all that she is. She is strong. She is a strong woman. She is consistent. She is unbending. She is a person who is, has godly wisdom. She lives for others, not just for herself. She cares for the needy. And then it ends with this. Give her the reward that she has earned. Give her the reward that she has earned. That is just between you and her. Give her the reward that she has earned. That is me hearing those words, Brad, give her the reward that she has earned, just between me and her. Question, another time to be able to be truthful, I don't do that near enough. And maybe husbands, you're out there saying, I don't do that near enough. I'll say this, 
you can't change yesterday. Yesterday is in the books. It's not going to be able to be changed. But you can change today. You still have about 12 hours and a half before this day is over with. And you have all day tomorrow, if the Lord gives it, and all this week to be able to do it. I encourage you to give her the praise that she has earned. In order to do that, you first need to think about the praise that she has earned. You need to think about what she has done. Think about all the times. Remember the, the poem, I didn't get it because I didn't want to cry. I don't know that I'm not going to be able to anyway. You remember the poem about the mom's hands? And all the things that a mom's hands have done. And it comes to the end of that and it talks about the hands that are wrinkled and that are curled. And they're not able to do what they once did. Because of all the things that they did do. Think about why your wife is to be praised. Today is not a day of correction. Today is not a day of, hey, you can do this a little better. Today is not a vacuum cleaner type of day. Today is a day of praise. And can I say this? The last verse of Proverbs, which I remind you is a book of wisdom is not a suggestion, it is a command. Give her the praise that she is earned. Give her the praise that she has earned, that she is due. That's a command that our Lord has given. And when we obey that in honoring our wives and honoring our moms, you know what else? We are also honoring God because he has told us to do it and we are here doing it by his grace. It shows that not only do we love our moms and that we love our spouses, we also love our Lord because what he has said we are obeying to do. Lastly in this, not only for us to give the reward that she has earned, but let her works bring her praise at the city gate. That is not just between you and her children. That's not just between you and her husband. That is for you to praise her in the city, in the workplace, in the neighborhood, in your home in front of your kids. That is to praise her in this place. I tell you what, when my wife worked at the hospital, I'm not saying anything about the hospital because I'm sure it's that way in a lot of places, but just when she worked at the hospital, I became a whole lot better husband because of women who were there that were so upset with her husbands. It made me look really good. My wife came home happy with me all the time. <laughs> and one of the reasons was this. My wife chose not to downplay me and not to speak evil against me in the public. Could she? Sure. Could she have joined in with the chorus of all the ladies who were upset at their husbands? Sure, she could have. She could probably put them to shame. But she didn't. Instead, she chose to speak well of me. To speak well instead of speak evil against. So husbands, here's the word for you, and let her praise bring her, or let her works bring praise in the city gate, in the place where the people are, out in the place where the city gate was, where the business was done, where the leaders of the city came together. Let your praise for your wife not just between you, be between you and her, but praise her to other people couple of reasons. It's good for you to do it. It's good for you to focus upon that. It's good for me to focus upon that. But here's another reason. That word is going to get back to her sometime. And it's going to lift her spirit and allow her to be encouraged in the Lord. This is what my husband thinks of me. He chooses not to say what the things is that I can change. But instead he chooses to lift me up for other people. And I'll guarantee you this, 
When and if you do that in a public way, you will stand out like husbands at the hospital in which my wife worked because it doesn't happen a whole lot. Think about it. When's the last time you heard somebody praising their wife or their children's mom for the greatness that they are? It's time. It's time. And today is the day, right? Today is a day for you and I to be able to do it. Let me read this one more time. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive. And beauty is fleeting, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Can I tell you this? If your wife or your mom loves the Lord, that is the greatest thing you can praise her for. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. May God be exalted in his word today.